portion of your workshop agenda. It's Tuesday, October 12th, and it is 2 o'clock. Um, I'm going to ask Commissioner Adams Act to do the invocation and Commissioner Turner to lead us in the pledge. Please rise if you're able to do so. States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Commissioner Adams. That Commissioner Turner, appreciate that. Is there any public comment on agenda items that we have right now? And any comments on agenda items? Okay, we'll move right on. We don't, we're not going to recess for the Port Authority, that's a 205, so we're going to go straight into the BOCC workshop. Item A, administration, donation of property for parks and recreation use. Julianne, do you have that one? Yes, sir. Um, we were contacted by a citizens group who has made the offer to donate a parcel of land located in East Palatka directly across from the post office there um, off of Old Putnam County Boulevard. Um, and they have two, the, the donation is just for free. However, they have two contingencies, one that it be retained for a public purpose or public gathering place, and two that some signage be erected in memory of um, Jerry Biedenball. Um, and so I do have some members of that group here with me, and I know that they would like to also speak with you. Um, it, we did, Parks and Rec staff did review the parcel. Um, we do believe that it is a, a a good location for a future use for a playground. There is not a playground facility south of the bridge, the Memorial Bridge, until you get down to Georgetown. Um, so we believe that would be a, a very good location to have a playground. We also brought it to the Parks and Rec Advisory Board who voted unanimously um, in agreement that they believe this is a, a good opportunity for the county. So that, with that, I'll answer questions and or um, let Judge Hedstrom and his group speak with us. All right, first of all, uh, I'm gonna let the Chairman of the Parks and Recreation Committee, Mr. Bill Pickens, speak first. Okay, thank you, Chairman Harvey. Yes, it was brought to us uh, at our last meeting at the beginning of the month, and um, we were in 100% agreement um, to go ahead and accept this gift uh, and just kind of put it in uh, for future development, the possibility to um, maybe apply for a FERDAP grant for playground equipment. Uh, so it would be a good uh, fit in that area. There is a ball field just down the road, but it's really not a park. It's, uh, it's got a basketball court, I believe, and a softball field or baseball field. So we were in unanimous agreement to make the re recommendation to the board to accept this gift. Good deal. Thank you. All right. Any, your group's up, Ms. Your Honor. I do want to point out that uh, Commissioner Turner uh, played on that ball field years ago, although that was many years after I played on it, <laughs> so it's sort of dear to both of us. Thank you. But thank you very much, and we appreciate it. Thank you. Okay, okay. Commissioner Turner, this is in your district. So, uh, Yes, sir. I, I had brought it to the board before and, uh, and expressed how uh, grateful I was to the group for offering this piece of property to the county. Uh, with that, I'd like to make a motion that we accept the offer in this piece of property into the park system. Proper motion by Commissioner Turner. I'll second it. Proper second by Commissioner Pickens. Any further discussion on the motion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. The ayes have it. Thank you. Appreciate your time. Have a great day. All right. We still are. Isn't it too early for me to start asking for money to put up a playground there? Yes, yeah, a little bit. We'll apply for a FERDAP grant. There Commissioner Turner, was that a way? <laughs> <laughs> All right. We're going to go Human Resources Employee of the Month Policy Update. We'll just move right on down the line. I actually read this, Mr. Chairman. I'm ready to make a motion to accept it, unless I, I don't want to steal Sarah's thunder, but if everybody's read it, I'm ready to make a motion to approve the changes. Yeah, I just, I updated it with the changes, the changes that you guys wanted. Commissioner Turner has been entered. Do we have a second? Second. 
Second by Commissioner Ramzak. Any further discussion on the motion at hand? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, like sign. The ayes have it. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Woo. we're going to recess our we're going to recess our our commission workshop and go to Port Authority workshop. Is there any public comment on Port Authority workshop? Hearing none, we'll go to general discussion. Is there any general discussion amongst the commissioners? Hearing none, we're going to join the adjourn the Port Authority workshop and go back to our regular workshop. Next item is item C, library services. Mr. Chairman, I move we accept the change in hours. All right, proper motion by Commissioner Turner. I'll second it. Second by Commissioner Pickens. Any further discussion on changing the hours? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, like sign, the ayes have it. Next item, procurement RFP for communication system upgrade for public safety. Oh, you want me to do you too, huh? Oh, no, you're gonna have to present this one. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, let's go. Um, Chairman, we are typically in a procurement, well, typically our process would be budget is in line and then we just do procurement on our own and then bring you back the rank order. Um, the communication system is something we've talked about at great lengths for a number of years now since I joined the county, frankly. <coughs> um, and so I, this is not new to you all for sure. However, um, we are asking in advance of having a line item budget dedicated to it that you allow us to go ahead and prepare the RFP and solicit for um, what we believe the proposed solution will be to upgrading our, our infrastructure and modernizing that communication system. Um, and then after we get to the bottom line and a rank order recommendation by the evaluation committee, we can then identify proper budgeting um, at that time. Okay, so this would be a complete overhaul of our radio systems, towers and everything a study at one big time to look at it is that what we're talking about it would be it would be the conversion to the p25 system and i know that there are many people in the room much more um intelligent on this particular matter that can can assist jr chad alicia joe gator um but Kinda yes it would be, be an overhaul of the person. entire system <laughs> I'm saying it's one that was not smart enough not to stand up but <laughs> um okay hang on a minute yes sir mr turner oh uh, yes so I need, before we get started, we all know that we need it, JR, if that's what you're fixing to do is try to, that was needed before you got here, before I was Ready a commissioner, it's been needed for years. So, you know, this is time we need to go on and figure out a way to bite this apple. I mean, it really is. But my question to you is, what are you actually asking us for today, Julie? Are you asking us to go ahead with a RFP and so, we're going to know how much this is going to cost when we're done. So they'll come in and say for X amount of dollars, we can fix this. And for, it won't be like a qualifications thing for somebody to design a system. We're actually going to find somebody that will propose for X amount of dollars. We'll fix this problem you have. That's correct. What we're proposing is to do a solutions based RFP with an evaluation committee of, of um, you know, a multitude of people in users of the system, as well as those who work in, um, on it so that we can bring back to the board exactly what we are asking for you to implement in Putnam County with the dollar amount associated to it. We'd like to do the RFP um, brand new, i.e. Um, instead of piggybacking or using a state term contract so that we don't eliminate a funding source. So if we, if we piggyback something, ARPA may not be eligible or a different funding source of federal nature may not be eligible. But if we do it in house, um, it would be customized to us. We would have all the federal terms and conditions in there. It doesn't obligate us to use federal dollars, but it essentially makes sure that we don't limit our uh, potential sources of funding so what you're asking today doesn't even make say that we have to move forward. It's just authorizing you to go out and see what's what it would cost to to uh, fix this problem that we've had for years. Correct. We're going to put a formal RFP on the street, so obviously you'd be involved or you'd you'd have knowledge of it. We're also going to convene um, an evaluation committee. The same same process would be in place. We would ask the commission and the evaluation committee not to have private conversations with any of the vendors that are going to participate. So we're asking to engage in that formal process, which is step one of how we get to the solution. Well, with knowing that for the last four years, at least, we, mm -hmm. it, we've exhausted every funding source that we could think of from the federal, 
uh, getting Yoho involved back before Cat was there and all the way down to the state and everything else in between. I don't, I don't, this is something we're gonna have to deal with somehow locally. And I think we've put our, our firefighters and our deputies in jeopardy long enough. So this commissioner is ready to move forward. I mean, you can talk to me again about it, Jarvis. All you're gonna do is say the same thing they've said the last four years. If you don't do it before long, we're gonna kill somebody. I have a question um, along those lines, and, and I appreciate you standing there, but I've, I've heard it and I want to solve the problem. But Julianne, my understanding is, um, is that other counties around us have went to a certain system that, and I don't recall which one, and maybe that's a good thing that I don't right now. Yep. Um, but it would seem like we would need to be synergy with them, if you will. Is that? Wouldn't that be something that we could say in our RFP that you know, we really want to, we want to be able to communicate in Putnam, but we also need to communicate with our surrounding counties. I think, are, aren't we still planning on trying to, to be actually part of St. John's system, that they're going to share oh, towers or well, use towers? Hold, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah. If we're going to use federal dollars, we need to go through a formal procurement process that would not limit our end result. When we solicit, when we put our RFP on the street, we're gonna ask for a solutions base. Mm -hmm. One evaluation criteria must be, based on what I've heard from both the SO and Fire Rescue, its ability to have interoperability with our surrounding counties for which we engage in mutual aid. Um, so we will evaluate the proposers, anyone who comes to the table, based on the metrics identified by those end users and the users of the system as to what they tell me they need in a successful communication system. And whomever can bring the best solution to the table will then be our recommended rank order. Okay, good. All right, good, thank you. Chair, we'll entertain a motion. I move that we move uh, item D forward for the procurement RFP for the communication system. Proper motion by Commissioner Turner. Do we have a second? I'll second it. Proper second by Commissioner Pickens. Any further discussion? Under discussion. Under discussion, Mr. Ross. Is the RFP going to say that we're going to that we're attempting to use ARPA money, or is it just going to leave that out? We shouldn't identify a funding source okay. for the RFP at all. Okay. Doesn't matter. Okay, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, like sign, the ayes have it. Next item up is our public works letter of support for St. John's Avenue drainage project scope and spank expansion. I'm ready to move this one forward too. There's no money in it for us. I mean, no money is not gonna cost us anything. We're just asking for a letter of support for the extra funds if they're available, correct? Correct. Move approval. Thank you, we have proper motion by Commissioner okay. Turner, second by Commissioner Adamzak. Any further discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. The ayes have it. Let me ask a question real quick. Yes, sir, Mr. What, Ross. What is the difference? We, we've, we've done this several times, the same project. It, it, do we just keep finding money every time we turn around? Right. D okay. DEO, you have the floor? if I may. You um, may. DEO <coughs> came in and gave us so much money. I think it was DEO. And then we get, they find additional money and we can apply for it. So they let it, let us add it to the same project. Well, it's the same things happened. I understand this money was actually left over from another county or something. I guess you're gonna have to come up and talk after all, Mike. I know you're prepared. <laughs> no, I just but the you. money became available. We, we've discussed this several times. The last time we said that we're gonna move close to the college and keep heading that. Now we're, we're just we just keep moving on, well, on and on as, the, as we get more money. Yeah, correct. And uh, th this is very tricky. The DEO process is lengthy and time-consuming, and some of the other counties don't want to go through that process, so they just not using the money and so since they don't use the money we've already got all of our environmental done for the whole project so this is they just keep giving us money so that we can press forward with it cool good thank you all right next on our agenda is what the, those initials mean oh <laughs> northeast florida regional council which i am the president and thank you uh, covid 19 economic recovery plan presented by sean LaHaye. i do want to thank commissioner rawls for serving on this committee with the regional council and uh, the hard work that the committee did and is doing. So um, 
Clay, you got the floor, sir. Thank Good you. afternoon, commissioners. Thank you for having me. And I, I believe Ms. Young is uh, about to pull up a presentation, but if you can't pull it up, there's no worries. You know, we can just have a discussion have here. Have book. <laughs> so uh, the focus of, of my discussion, are you able to pull it up? Okay, no problem. And we can get started. Uh, the focus of my discussion today or item is on the Northeast Florida COVID-19 economic recovery plan. So back in May 2021, during a commission meeting, I briefly addressed you on different components of the plan. Uh, but with the amount of time that has passed since then, there are additional considerations and opportunities that we would like to emphasize to you as you continue these ARPA discussions. Uh, so give me one second just to pull up the presentation and then we'll get started. Great, we're going. We could have had you out of here really quick. You know, <laughs> there's no motion required. So. <laughs> and, and so, while the presentation is getting loaded up, you know, I'll just start off on an introductory note uh, for everyone in the room. So, the Northeast Florida Regional Council is one of ten regional planning councils in the state of Florida. Commissioner Harvey currently serves as the president of the board of directors for the regional council. We won't Com hold that against you. <laughs> And uh, Commissioner Rawls has also served as a member of the Board of Directors, and we are very grateful uh, for both of your service and dedication to the board. And so going back all the way to August 2020, the Regional Council received a federal award through the CARES Act, and this was awarded by the Economic Development Administration. And utilizing this money, the Regional Council established the Northeast Florida Economic Resilience Task Force a policy body of 20 leaders from across Northeast Florida. And so Commissioner Rawls was one of two. Oh, yeah, no problem. Uh, Commissioner Rawls was one of two uh, elected officials who served on the, the task force. Everyone else represented different interests ranging from local government, private sector to nonprofit. And so over the course of a year, we facilitated more than 12 meetings and identified policy recommendations that could assist local governments across Northeast Florida in the economic recovery journey that lies ahead. When the recovery plan was published in May 2021, and sorry for, it, no, there's really no worries. Okay. <laughs> so when the recovery plan was published in May 2021, ARPA uh, funding announcements from the federal government also came out. And so the recovery plan and the ARPA guidelines really lined up nicely. The priorities that were identified by the task force were also the priorities of the federal government. And so since that time frame, we've been communicating the recovery plan to elected officials and local governments all across Northeast Florida. And so once I pull this up, you know, I'm going to share a few insights from this process and also share, you know, what other local governments have been considering. Uh, maybe that can be considered as you begin to shape your process as well. Technology makes all of our lives more difficult. It was supposed to be easier, remember? Yes. <laughs> but it... We we have the presentation in our book. If you yeah, just, already seen if you want to just kind of yeah, that's fine. I, I really we don't need to put it on the screen. There's no worries. Yeah, if that's not, okay with you. Yeah, not, yeah, that, that's yeah, absolutely fine. Don't fight with it. We'll keep this informal today, and I think that might even lead to a better discussion. Good deal. So within the recovery plan, as I mentioned to you several months ago, there was three identified priority areas. The first one was infrastructure, which is obviously a huge <coughs> priority for local governments across the region. The second one was relief and support for small businesses. And the third one was equity, looking at affordable housing, mental health issues, um, one of the biggest priorities identified throughout this process was broadband, uh, you know, expanding broadband access, affordable high-speed broadband access. And so through the Regional Council, uh, we're, you know, in the process of forming new uh, policy initiatives to start looking at those issues. And so relating this to the American Rescue Plan Act, you all received a pretty hefty size of money. Northeast Florida as a whole, seven counties, 25 municipalities, received over $500 million in federal assistance. So that's direct local government allocations. Even really small towns like Hilliard, Baldwin, et cetera, uh, received you know, upwards of $1.7 million in, in some cases. 
So this is a really interesting opportunity uh, for the entire country, but especially here in Northeast Florida with how many concerns are on the table. And so in the presentations that I've given across the region, some of the most important priorities that elected officials have expressed an interest in is affordable housing, expanding broadband access, that's, that's been an observation that everyone has mentioned, um, and then more traditional issues and concerns related to water and sewer infrastructure. And so I've been following some of your discussions here at the local level in Putnam County, and, and obviously all of those issues have kind of been brought up, uh, but it seemed like broadband, water and sewer infrastructure, and, and some other components like mental health uh, resources have really been, uh, you know, coming to the forefront of discussions. So some considerations from across Northeast Florida. Nassau County developed a prosperity plan to guide how they're spending this money. And this is a really interesting, you know, model example to consider. The way they're explaining it, the CARES Act is really focused on economic stabilization in real time. It was emergency assistance. American Rescue Plan Act, on the other hand, can be utilized to build multi-generational long-term investments. And so there's really different focuses within both of these funding sources. And so while CARES Act helped people directly, this might be an opportunity to address infrastructure needs, et cetera. Now, a few other things to consider. Obviously, the infrastructure package in Congress is facing some uh, hurdles right now. But if that moves through, um, you know, this month or next month, there might be additional opportunities beyond ARPA to address some of those, you know, underlying concerns. Um, so that's really what's happening, you know, across Northeast Florida. More than interested to hear what you all are discussing and how the Regional Council can assist you all. And finally, the Economic Development Administration within the U.S. Department of Commerce recently announced $3 billion in additional funding opportunities. So if you have local partners <coughs> interested in projects related to tourism, economic development, all sorts of things, even um, outdoor recreation, there's money on the table, and the Regional Council has uh, staff resources that can assist you in, in navigating those grants. Okay. So more than happy to answer any questions, and if you have any discussion items that you'd like to you know, bring up, we can do that as well. Mr. Rawls, you have the floor. I, you know, I know you're leaving next week. <laughs> um, Sad. And, you know, the other day it was, yeah, it, it was, it's kind of bittersweet, though. You know, you don't, I would hope you wouldn't ex expect to stick around there forever, but you, you've done a great job. And um, I'd ask you the other day, you know, if we're still going to have an opportunity to do a, uh, a plan like Flagler County did um, for their preparedness, and you said yes, so hopefully the person that picks the ball up and runs with it will get started on that pretty soon. Um, regarding the ARPA, I'm, you know, I'm, I want to see as much of it go to the citizens as possible. Um, I want us to spend as little bit on ourselves as possible and get out in the community because there's, you know, a tremendous amount of need now, and there will be a lot more need as we keep going through this disastrous economy. Um, but um, what, do you, what do you see? What, you said Nassau County was the one that had the, um, what was the term you used? Uh, so Nassau County developed a prosperity plan. What, you know, what percentage of their money um, stays in the community, directly to the community? You know? So I, I would have to look at that, but I think a lot of the focus is, is maintaining investments in the local community. But there's questions of whether you know, that money is going to outside contractors or the contractors are at the local level. So there's okay. a lot of you know, things that would have to be looked at. But we can forward that document to you all, and we'll, we'll do some analysis as well. I'd love to see that. Yep. All right. Thank you. <clears throat> no problem. Commissioner, any other questions? Uh, I have a quick question. Yes, one. Mr. Turner. Um, so basically what the other communities or the, what the Northeast Florida Regional Planning Council has been uh, talking about is basically trying to take the ARPA money and use it more for a multi-generational investment in the community and whatever more so than like the CARES Act where you distributed it straight to people. Is that what I'm hearing you saying? I would say that that's part of the focus. So the Regional Council, everything that we've been doing on COVID-19 is purely, you know, advisory. So we're just coming up with ideas. So the local level, these are where the decisions have to be made. But what we're seeing across the region is that local governments have an interest in building those types of long-term investments. And uh, a, a lot of local governments aren't providing any, you know, direct business assistance or anything. They're focusing strictly on infrastructure. Personally, I think there's a balance to this discussion, um, but that's just an observation that we, we've noted across the region. Thank you. No problem. Any other questions? Sean, thank you again for coming. We appreciate it. Good luck in the future. Thank you. I've always enjoyed working with you. You're a highly intelligent young man. Your future is very bright.
I appreciate it. And, and so. have a good day. And this is now not the last. Now he's going to wear a hard hat. <laughs> this is not the last time I'll be in Palatka. I'll be back soon. We so. look forward to it. I so. appreciate it. Thank have a good day. You. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next item on our agenda is Addendum 1, Board of County Commission Redistricting Map Revision. Um, who is going to take that one? This, Mr. Suggs, you want to grab that? Sure, I'll take that, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, okay, I'll toss it back over to Commissioner Turner. As, uh, <laughs> as we're having this discussion, could we bring out the fact for the publisher of the newspaper that sent me an email the other day that basically was asking us when we were going to take public comment for them and let the world know that this is the third meeting. We had one of how we were going to kick it off where we invited everybody. We had another workshop where we invited everybody <coughs> and the school board chair came and participated in the workshop with us. This is a third workshop that we're doing for <coughs> the final tweaking of the deal where everybody was invited and, and let know about it. You can't make a horse drink when you lead them to the trough. So we, this is our third meeting and we're not going to finalize this today. We may move it forward, but it's, I understand we've still got to have, we've still got to have the legal descriptions of the areas too. And that's what's being worked on at the moment in order to finish this up. So at the earliest, we're going to have another public hearing on this, which would be in two, approximately two weeks if, if they can get all the paperwork done. So I just, this thing hasn't been just rat rough shotted through or whatever. We've called meetings and told everybody about it and asked people to come and invited anybody that wanted to come. So there's nothing trying to be hid or slid through here at all. So um, anyhow, I just wanted to bring that to everybody's attention. If you see the new maps on your plan, this is what um, Commissioner Pickens had some concerns about, wanting to keep District 1 a little bit more wholer. The numbers came back within 116 people from that district. Uh, Mr. Pickens, do you have anything you want to comment on about that? Well, just that what I was trying to get across is that, um, that with the boundary lines of, of Highway 17, that north of that would be come into district one and then we would take back into district excuse me district three and then basically who our ridge which was just kind of cut out of district one was in district three that we would put that back into district one and then come around by the river north of 309 and pick up those voting blocks i guess is how we had to do that and the result is that everything north of of 17 and then 309 would be in district three going across the duns creek bridge and then south everything would be district one and taking back in hoot owl ridge and you look the numbers got a little bit closer than they were the other day at I the last map that we had which i, I, I believe is what we we're trying to accomplish i think it's the great job on that so i appreciate that any other comments i know charles you've seen the map Do you have any comments you'd like to make mr overture okay Okay, Mr. Adams, is that why he's on his way up? Yeah. <clears throat> so I, I like the map overall, but I think there's still some, on the edges of five and two, there's some things I think we can clean up the lines on, like that yellow block that stands out there, that there really, I don't think there was a lot of people in that block. I think we did click on it at one point, and then maybe it got unclicked or something. And then there's some little pieces as you come across there, that north-south line. I think if we added, I think it did add a few more people and then maybe give some of that back to, to two on the other edge if that makes the numbers kind of funky. This is talking about that block right there. Yeah, and then there's a couple little tiny ones that you can't see in the small map, but on the big map they stand out. We're just little, little, little dots that are yellow south of that, the line. I, if I may. Yeah. I think that part of the problem here, and I learned this from dealing with them when they were here, is that that little chunk is part of a census block that's above it or outside right. of it, then in order to take it, that it actually goes up into the deeper into district yeah. two. So it's not necessary that you can just take right. the little block out. It may be part of a different census block. I think we had them taken out when we were doing it. We and tried I tried to take that one out, you and I did that day, and they couldn't because it was part of the system. Yeah, that's system where, that was over here. I, right. I'm talking about this I one. I understand, but I think it's part of the system. And there's a little think, triangle here. I think that block went out into here. Okay. And that's the reason why they couldn't take that 
particular block out okay. was because that census block actually runs into the to the east further than just the, the line. I'm just trying to steal some of your district, that's all. Take, take part in that. <laughs> All right, I think we're good on that. Charles, what, do you see any issues with any of that? Uh, I'm sorry, Mr. Overture, I shouldn't have called you Charles. Just, just a couple of things in light of uh, Commissioner Turner's comments. The only comment I would hear, and I've had a couple of people call, is there a way that the maps on the website can be enlarged, including putting the, the names of the streets on it, because people are saying they cannot determine and it's just like looking at this, I can't tell whether, you know, which street your district ends and his sure. begins or vice versa. So that would be my thing would be to see if there's some way that you can, you know, increase it so the that IT that way. shaking their head, yes. Yeah, so. uh, yeah. and, and considering that changes were made just in the last couple of days, I think that's the comments that they're making is they didn't have any, uh, any opportunity to have any say so about the first couple of meetings just because we weren't they to that. They could have showed up for every meeting, Mr. Overturf. That's the part that irks me a little about well, the, the newspaper trying to make out like we're not being transparent here. Well, we're trying to be the, totally the, transparent. The state's going to have meetings, so just, I, I get I, it. you know, okay. So I, you know, just making so, that comment and the paper's aware of it. Uh, my comment to you would be, I would rather you not do anything this afternoon. I think out of respect yeah, to the school board, they need to have a say so and in fact they can draw their own districts uh, i don't want that i want it to be <laughs> where your district is the same as your uh, counterpart in the school board so i think that that's important is the commissioner or the chairman uh, uh, you know make a, a presentation and let them have a say so i have a feeling they will be glad to rubber stamp it you know that they'll agree you all have done a great job and that kind of thing but to me it's just respectful uh, you know, given Carl, them that's my next comment. So oh, okay. You don't mind. All right. And board, then the, the other, I want to ask you of this is the school board is meeting on 1019 at 330 in the afternoon. With your permission, I'd like to take these maps once we, if this is the map we're going to settle on today. And I believe Mr. Overturf, you said you'd go with me and glad to. we yes. could go together and go down there and make that presentation to the school board. And then we'd still have time to come back at the end of the month. You want a motion or a consensus? Well, uh, it, it, as long as y'all give me permission to do it, I'm fine with that. Okay. I wouldn't step out my authority and do it on and my own. And I think that's a really great idea because then they can vote and then you all can finalize it and then we're, we're done. So my other suggestion to you is I did check into the comments because two or three of you had asked about us switching the numbers. I called the state. The state says they have no problem with it. They said the only one I needed to check with would be our county attorney if he has any question. I will give you an example. This was done where we just switched uh, district numbers, and it was done the last uh, census in 2011. It was in school board districts, and uh, Chairman Harvey, you're four now, but back then that was five. Okay. <laughs> and so they flip-flop those two. Nobody has to run. Nobody has to change anything and that was the way it was then and it would be the same now if you all decided it then of course mr Obviously buckles and miss gilliard good. would switch and mr turner and mr rawls would switch the numbers and it keeps it better on your maps uh, okay, but you our asked ordinance me to, calls for you for two two and four running the same year one three and five <coughs> running the same year that's what our ordinance says correct because I'm getting conflicting information from different people than what you're getting your information from. Okay. So it says that the, the ordinance says that the two and four runs in one year and one, three, and five more runs in one year. So if you switch three with two for whatever reason, then how can it be that three doesn't have to run again? And I'm, under because and I'm understanding also on top of that, I'm understanding that the... Um, that not only having to run again, but also he he may not have to run again next year because our ordinance says he doesn't have to run until if he's in district three until three years from now. Okay, the only thing I can tell you is because you were elected last year, nobody can touch your term. So you're there for the four year term. If we just flip flop the numbers, like I said, they did it in 11 and there was no problem with it. They switched the two, went from four to five and five to four 
In this, you'd be looking at three to two and two to three. If our ordinance says it, excuse me if you don't mind, we could change our ordinance if that Exactly, be right. Or I not, we don't have to change. we're trying to go through we all these hoops because, because it doesn't seven. say one, two, three, four instead of one, three. It's fine, it can stay two, the way it four. is. Why would we go through all yeah. that effort? I agree. At <laughs> first, it sounded like an easy cleanup, but it, not I'm still trying to figure out why we're even messing with redistricting with the little bit that we had. Mr. Adams, are you done, Mr. Turner? <coughs> Mr. Adams, so does, do we have this software somewhere locally? No. Or, I'm not aware of it, no. All right, there That's is. why we paid them all the money. Great. Thanks. I'd like to be able to click on a couple of those and move it around a little bit just because it cleans it up a little bit, but because I don't remember it being that way. I think we just went too far to the right and I took on too many people was the issue. I don't think it was that that was connected. I think that was more down here where we were working between one and three. But I mean, I don't really care. It's, we run countywide. It's kind of not overly relevant to anything. Right. But uh, just to answer your question, at some point, the software will have to be here because we have to use it for precinct purposes. Right, that's why I thought so you guys purchased it. I thought we were, Well, no. you all did. Yeah. Right, I think we purchased the software. Oh, we rented it. We just we, hired it. Yeah, but it won't get here. Right now, this process is being done by them down in Tampa. Right, it'll but at some point, later on. there will be... Once we finalize our maps, it'll come back to you to... Right. But we have to finalize our maps. Mr. Right. Chairman. Oh, Mr. Sorry. Rawls has a comment, then I'll go to you, sir. No, I'm, I'm good. Okay, Mr. Turner. Uh, the only thing I'd like to say at this point is, is to make sure that we, out of an abundance of caution, and everybody's got to see it, that we do exactly what Char uh, Mr. Overturf said, that we make sure that it gets on the, the map with roads, as many identifying features as we can and put and repost it on to the uh, website and uh, and that you take it to the school board one last time even though the chair was here when we pretty much did it uh, take it to them for approval of official approval where there, nobody can say that we tried to just run through this um, so, so we're all in agreement that we're going to go with the take, vision take the map as presented today I, I move that we take the map as presented today and move it forward Thank you. Proper motion by Commissioner Turner. We have a second. I'll second it. Proper second by Commissioner Pickens. Mr. Rawls, you have a comment on the motion? I thought we weren't going to, so we're going to hold off until school. We're just district. moving it forward. Moving right? it forward in the process. That's all. Does that Which means he takes it. Do what? Does that require a motion? Or? Well, yeah, it's cleaner. Moving forward in the process. That's what I said. It just cleans no, it up. It's, it's, not a, it's not a vote. No, it's not right. a final vote. What it does is it no, this moves it forward in the process. It allows him to go to the school board and present it as the map that we voted on. Two more weeks. Um, hopefully we'll have our legal descriptions done in two weeks and we can vote on it for real after the school board has seen it and looked at it and approved it. And I don't know who else. And then- well, Wouldn't we want to then have a meeting with the public and let them see the big maps and come in and interact or no? Well, that's what we can do, yeah. Okay. That'll be part oh. of that meeting. That would be the 19th meeting. Charles looks confused. Is that is that not appropriate? Not no, the nineteenth. I mean, nineteenth is a school board meeting. <coughs> yeah, that's yeah. If that's you're going to do it, and like we'll take public input Turner by said. putting it on our website. So with the street identifiers on it, we've already got shaking of heads going on. That's where we can take some public input. We'll come back at the end of the month, and we'll have our legal descriptions. And if anybody has anything, and what I might suggest, and I'm not suggesting it to them, but I'm sure they'll do it, is maybe divide it up into the districts instead of putting the big map, because you're not going to be able to, to be, make it that large for the people. But if you do it Terry's district, then everybody will know exactly where his is and where Paul's is, you know, that kind of thing. Sure. So that way it gives them more information to look at. But for clarification, we're, we're not planning on having a meeting with, with the public here now, after the school district? Well, you want to have the, a, yeah. There will be a public meeting because it has to come back in front of the Board of County Commissioners for a resolution for adoption. I mean, so, I mean, a, a meeting specifically for this. It, it sounds to me like, based on what you're saying, and based, you said, and I, I got the same email, um, it sounds to me like there, there is people wanting to come in here and engage us in the process. So where are they? They can come. They can make comments online. They can come. We got plenty they, of, and they will have plenty of time. And I understand Commissioner uh, Rawls' concern, but if we, 
if we advertise this property and we get the school board meeting that's going to be advertised as well that they're going to be looking at it there right. once we get the information back that the board of county commissioners directs us to go ahead and get the resolution with the uh, legal descriptions for the new uh, for the new districts I think at that time there'll be plenty of opportunity for public comment during the meeting itself prior to any adoption of any any uh, redistricting maps to be able to have that com conversation at that time. All right, so we have a proper motion and a second. Any further comment? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. The ayes have it. Thank you, Mr. Overture. Appreciate your comments on that. Next item on the agenda, commissioner request. This is going to come from me. I've asked IT, Sarah, Joel, and <laughs> y'all come up. Um, broadband. As you know, I am the chairman of the Presidential Select Committee on Broadband for the state. I will be in Tallahassee tomorrow pitching broadband to Senate President and House Speaker um, and letting them know where we're at in the process. But our every county under the Access 67 program through the Florida Association of Counties is asked, not mandated, to do certain things. And so I've kind of asked our IT department to look at this, and I've stepped away from it because I didn't want to taint the picture. But I do want to have a conversation about broadband today and the local technology teams and the mapping plan because we do have, um, we do have some things that we are, I don't want to say mandated, but required by DEO to have done. The local technology planning team has to be done by next year or something like that. Um, but I'll turn it over to you. So, all right. <laughs> okay. All right. It's a joy, and thank you for uh, for letting me stand here today. Uh, we had a proposal uh, from Magellan Advisors there uh, um, to do a broadband feasibility study for Putnam County. Uh, they, after looking, I've kind of just made some notes and 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 kind of what they're looking at doing. Uh, they've worked with many counties and cities in the state of Florida. Uh, recently, is this can be a county? I think is how you say it. Their objective uh, with this project is to determine the low cost and effective way for Putnam County to improve the local broadband environment uh, for the benefit of its communities and citizens uh, that are in rural and underserved or underserviced area or no service at all in those areas. They'll provide us with a range of options uh, to improve on that uh, through the broadband environment base in the as in the infrastructure, you know, and their assets, and all. They'll basically what they'll do is they'll they'll assess our current network as uh, an infrastructure that we have, uh, as far as cell towers and fiber loops within the within the county, the cities, uh, you know, br going out down the major highways and all. They'll do that. Uh, they're going to the scope of work's really done in about seven tasks. Uh, first would be the project kickoff, the second being current assessment and the market demand. Uh, the evaluate the task three will be to evaluate the county's current broadband and their network capabilities. Uh, they'll do a gap analysis after that on the task four. Task five is they'll actually submit a network design of how we're going to get there. They whether it be through uh, fiber, uh, laying fiber, whatever, or uh, wireless communications on this, off the satellites. Um, so that's in their network design. Uh, fiber to the home is another one that, they're, that they'll look at and assess as well. Uh, task six, what, the cost summary and the details, of course, and task, well, there's actually nine tasks, I'm sorry. Task seven, financials and funding sources. They'll actually go and tap and see where uh, we can get financing and, or excuse me, uh, financials and funding sources, I should say, for the project. Uh, and they have, uh, they work very closely with FCC and all of that as well. And then the task eight would be the regulatory review, and then task nine, of course, the recommendation and the broadband roadmap. They will also provide us with mapping services uh, of these areas as well, GIS uh, map, uh, outlining the areas in our county that are, that are underserved or, or not served at all uh, with the map of the infrastructure we've got and things of that nature as well. So that's kind of what their proposal was for that. And let me kind of touch on we, we know DEO, Department of Economic Opportunity, Office of Broadband, has a grant to do a state mapping, but they're not going to drill down into local communities. So if we're going to be trying to pitch our, our community as we need money for broadband when money comes available, this is actually the first step in producing a document um, with that. And I liked your number nine, too. It was also a recommendation, is what I heard you say. Right. That they're going to come in and say, 
because I know Commissioner Rawls, if I, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but you, you've used public, uh, public private partnerships before. They will let us know what's feasible, what's not feasible, so we don't go back down that road of the, the prior broadband situation we right. had in this county. Right. So I'm just going to leave it like that. I've, I've tried to stay out of the weeds because I didn't want to be in there with you. Uh, I appreciate you diving in and studying this, and yes, sir. thank you very much. Absolutely. So, all right. Mr. Rawls? So just, <clears throat> just to follow up with that, um, and I discussed this really briefly with the uh, regional council. It, it makes sense when you look at other areas that, that have their own utilities um, and they're providing um, data access. Uh, it, it's, it's, it's a fundraiser, but it's also a service that we can provide. Um, I think it's a utility that's going to be um, ne uh, necessary going forward and it become more and more necessary um, as we become more uh, digitally connected and working from home and you know all, all the solutions that we've dealt with over the past 365 days. Uh, have, I think brought out the fact that we do need to have um, broadband uh, or more more access to broadband. Um, but I'm, I'm just wondering if there's not a way that we can, while you're doing this study, take a look at the possibility or the feasibility of us having a uh, something along the lines of what Gainesville has with the GRU when they um, sell or the city of Bartow or any of these other municipalities that, that are able to um, run their own utility and, and sell broadband. Sure. Okay. Yeah, we can certainly take a look at that. Uh, if I remember right, the proposal that I received, that, that is actually something they'll, uh, they'll go and uh, assess as well. Uh, as far as the county infrastructure goes and things of that nature, our network and, and uh, just network infrastructure, that's something they'll, they'll assess as well, but I will make sure we take a, a look into that for sure. Well, it's, you know, you, you go to a place like the Yucatan Peninsula and you'll see um, markers that are that are cautioning because they have buried um buried fiber optic fiber, right. um, they call it laser but um and then you don't feel sorry for third world countries anymore because you realize that their technology is far advanced more advanced than ours so we have an opportunity to be able to put stuff in place that some of your bigger municipalities don't have and they may not have for decades down the road right. uh, but i think that there's there's an opportunity here for us to be able to get in that business um, I don't see any opportunity for any private company to come in and go out in some of these really rural areas and make any money. They'll lose money, and you know I'm, I'm sure their their business model includes losses. But I don't know how much of an appetite they have when you've got you know a third of the state of Florida as rural as we are. Um, we're going to be fighting over that. So I think this is an opportunity for us as a commission to take a look at the possibility of having that as, as an additional utility and as part of the infrastructure that we're building. Look at us building it and not being heavily dependent on lower satellites or somebody else um, providing or not providing. You know, it, it pains me when I hear people getting connected to ADSL. It's like, you know, yes, sir. the 90s called. Right. <clears throat> you know, Mr. Rawls, before I turn it over to Mr. Amzak, this conversation is a whole lot different today than it was three months ago and a lot different than it was two years ago when this started. And to your point, I do, I have been in talks with companies that you'd be surprised that are now going, I want to be in that business. And we already have the assets out there. So I think the, the money is drawing them to the table. And I think the, the idea of them being what they used to be or what they can be to the citizens is, is changing their philosophy quite differently. Surely they need help, don't get me wrong but um, they don't need as much help as I think they started the conversation with months ago, I'll tell you that. So well, what I'm told is when you have someone that's got a driveway that's 600 feet long, mm -hmm. it, it's, it's gonna be painful for them. You know, they may have to add a node. They're not gonna wanna do that for pick up one customer. So- Be surprised <clears> what they're willing to do right now. <laughs> and a lot, of, a lot of people are complaining about the, um, the satellite technology and you know, it, it's, I'm old enough to remember what it's like when you're downloading something and you lose connection <laughs> or, or you, there's one packet of information that didn't come through and you gotta go through the whole thing over again. So, um, you know, hopefully you get those days put behind us, but I think this is an opportunity for us to take a look at having a utility. Um, I don't know if it's something we need to discuss when we're uh, convened as, the, um, as a port authority. I still have not gotten the answer to the question yet, Rich. Are we allowed to have a utility authority as a port authority? No. <laughs> All right, so. You know, that's, that's not something the county can do right now under, under our current um, governance type, but uh, you know, I think it's something we can work towards. 
Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Rawls. We're going to, I'm going to get back to Mr. Ritchie on it. He's going to mention that too. Mr. Adams, that? Well, maybe let's do that first. Okay, go ahead. What's the ask today? We've got to do a mapping plan, number one. That's yeah. our big ask. Yeah, you've been selling for a half an hour now. Try to <laughs> tell us what you're selling. <laughs> the the well, Magellan Advisors, they, um, they are, they're selling a, an assessment for current infrastructure uh, within our county, doing an assessment of that and mapping out the under, underserved and, and non-served non areas in How Butler much is county. that going to cost? The quote that we got was uh, between eighty and ninety thousand dollars from Magellan. But we need to know what we don't know, don't we? Right. And we can use ARPA funds for that. And how long do they think it would take to do the assessment? They there was a timeline, and I believe it was four to five months for the assessment. And that'd be a by, by weekly meeting, I believe, through all of that. What they told us. Yeah. All right. I'm, I'm ready now. I'm not, it's my turn. Or yes, sir. I, I thought I did yeah. call on you. So, <laughs> so the concern with anything with technology, right? My concern about having utility around internet is government speed does not keep up with technology. So, I mean, if we were talking about maybe water, which we do, or electric, maybe. Um, internet, I, I, I think we need to stay as far away from it as possible. There's a reason why private companies don't serve the areas that are underserved, because it's, it's not beneficial to them financially. Um, so government's role in this, I guess, under this new federal regime is to throw money at it that I really don't think it's government's place to do, but if it's there, we need to use it. Um, so I'm all for doing it because it's there. Um, my only concern really is the four to five months. I mean, a lot of technology can change in four to five months. Exactly what you said in three months, <laughs> yeah. it's changed dramatically. Right. Four to five months, the assessment could be done. All of a sudden, in that four to five months, we know that SpaceX is gonna come online. We don't know how many people are signed up for that. There's huge changes that we know are gonna happen between now and the next six months that uh, it, it puts me out of it for, for that reason alone, probably. I, I agree we need to map it in some way, but I mean, we kind of know the map. You, you go where there is dirt roads and you get 100 yards off, and that's the map. Um, it, it, it logic dictates some of this. Some of it does, but if we're going to, yeah. If you're, we're not going to be able to go get every house in the county. It just isn't going to happen. Mr. Turner? Well, I was going to pretty much say what he just said, uh, with the exception maybe in my blunt San Mateo manner. Um, I... Uh, I got a lot of heartburn paying $90,000 to draw a map that may be invalid and by the time the map's ready because of technology that's happening so fast. I understand people don't like satellite uh, internet at the moment, but there's nothing to say they won't like it in six months. I mean, really, five years ago, they'd say satellite internet, what? What did you just say? And now they're actually putting it in place. Right. It's probably not as fast or as, as good right now as as um, as fiber optic or whatever, but or cable or what have you. But it's it's coming, you know. So we're right at that juncture right now that if we throw money into just mapping by and and how we're going to do it and where it is and and those sort of especially ninety thousand dollars. If it was nine, that'd be different. But ninety. Um, there's a lot to be done in this county with ninety thousand um, dollars. So I, I, I have a hard time doing this at this juncture, when the whole technology of internet reception is probably going to change within the next year. I, mean, I think with is because of all the satellites and the stuff and the private money and the that's where the rural internet's going to come from. Will it be as fast as fiber fiber optic? Probably not. But it's a lot better than using a hotspot. <laughs> yes, sir. So, you know, I, I don't know. I'm, ha I'm having trouble getting there. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, let me, do, would you mind if I comment real quick? Do not. Go right ahead. Absolutely understand where this conversation is going and the direction is going. So if it would be uh, the will of the commission and certainly you as the chair uh, and also the chair of the Broadband Committee for the Florida Association of Counties, 
if it would be beneficial, I would like to be able to put a, uh, an IT committee together with, with James and, and a couple other folks and working through you, Mr. Chair, to see what other opportunities might be out there for funding of this and see if there's any other organizations out there that we might be able to look into mapping for this and not let this issue just kind of go away with you being the chair of the uh, Broadband Committee. I, I wouldn't mind doing that for you if, it, if, if that would assist. No, I, I appreciate that, but it, it's not about, it's not much about me being the chair. It's, I think it's what we need to know what we don't know. And I think that's where we're gonna come down to it. And yeah, that's a hefty price tag and I was not prepared for that. But I do think that that even, even if we get down four months, they can clean up the last month because we'll know where we're at. Um, but I do think that if we're going to look at more funding coming down the path, we got to have a document that says this is where we need funding. And we can say, yeah, well, it's 100 feet down that dirt road, but that doesn't really tell the federal government anything. We need to find a product that tells our story. And our story is we've got a lot of people that have, I think, I'll say this before I turn over to Mr. Raw, everyone in the county has internet. I believe that. I believe they have access to internet. Is it reliable, affordable, and accessible? Those are the three things and for me the cost I pay it might be half if I lived in Orlando I mean it just and I might get more service I don't know that answer but I don't think we know what we don't know right now and what we don't know is what are all the assets we currently have in the county I don't think this I know it's a hefty price tag and it shocked me too because I told you I didn't want to know Rob. I stayed out of it um, but it is something that I think one day we're gonna have to prove that this is where our underserved or not served people are at, and this is the help we need. And unless we have that document, I don't think we're gonna see funding coming down to help us. Mr. Rawls, you have the floor, sir? Yeah, I just wanna be clear that what I'm, what I'm describing is a public-private partnership, not just us going into business. Uh, I think you know, there, there's really no way that we're not gonna be able to get around um, providing the service to all of our citizens one way or another, because we have a lot of students. Um, vir virtual learning environment is really grown to be very popular and we're, we're we're looking right now at a lot of a lot of um development coming to putnam county people that are moving in here are going to need access to that as well so we're a connected community we're a connected say a connected nation and a connected world by virtue of the internet and i think that it's something that we should be looking into uh you know looking for looking for those opportunities with the uh, private company maybe you know we don't have any control. It irks me that we don't collect money from FPNO and Clay County on um, uh, franchise fees, you know, for electricity. <clears throat> but um, you know, in, in, the, in the future, I, you know, I hope that this commission would take advantage of the fact that there there probably is someone out there that would be willing to come along for the ride with us. And like you said, they're going to require a little bit of funding, um, and we're just going to have to figure a way to make the money available. Uh, but I think there's there's a way to to recoup that money, and that would be by having uh, you know triple P or something to that effect. Thank you, Mr. Ramza. I'm not against the idea of a public-private partnership, but I think that partnership starts with the assessment. So I think maybe we need to look for a player that'd be willing to share the cost of an assessment, and then move forward from there. Maybe that's potentially. I, I don't know that that player is out there, to be honest with you. Um, Speed is, is, is not, <laughs> speed doesn't mean everything, right? Because there, there's speed, I have satellite at my house and I have wind stream. My wind stream is one tenth as fast as my satellite, but my wind stream I can do my VPN on because it doesn't have to do six round trips of communication to basically log in and do security protocols. The wind stream is great for streaming my kids stuff, you know, but I'm paying $429 a month between the two. That's insane. So in Orlando, I definitely could go for forty nine ninety nine and get hundred <laughs> megabit direct line into my house. I, that, that can happen. So you're absolutely right, Commissioner. Harvey. Yeah. Um, so we just we got to watch that when we talk about speed. I mean, that there there's distinct differences between what the technology is and what the speed means. That speed isn't always usable, if that makes sense. Um, so public private partnership is great. I don't think we have the private partners here, but how do we, we, we'd have to ask, how would we put that out that we're looking for that? Well, what, we do have AT&T and Comcast right now here. Th that are saying, hey, let's partner with you guys. Uh, they're in the county now. Sure, and we have Windstream and <clears throat> there's so satellite it, providers. And so at what point can we not go to those and say, you're here in our county already providing services, we wanna, we wanna work with you, we wanna expand this and bring them to the table since they're already here 
utilizing our right of ways anyways. <clears throat> I, I think that's a great idea to go to them, but. And they are, they are coming, but the problem is, is that, well, they want money to run. Their solution right now is fiber. Well, I'm someone, I'm someone as far as funding goes, but. I get it, I get it. Mr. Rich, I have a question for you. Is there any way to go back to this company that you're, you're talking about and going, boy, the board almost had a heart attack over the price tag. Um, you know, could we go down a little lower? Could we, what could we get for 50000 or what could we get for 40000 I don't know the answer, we but do, I'm just asking you that. Yes, sir. We do have a contact, and I can reach out to her and uh, see what we can, uh, what they can do for us, what kind of packages maybe they provide or what level of service and whatnot. Okay. Mr. Adams, that you have a floor? Yeah. I actually wasn't shell-shocked by the price. Oh, I, really? I, I don't want to pay the price. <laughs> okay. um, for, for, for an IT project to this scope, 80 to 90K is actually fairly reasonable, in my opinion. Yeah, it's um, only a, well, I mean, I, I, I manage these type projects for a living. That's what I do. And 80 to 90K for a four-month project across, you know, this geography that we have and assessing things, that collecting the data, it's, it's not unreasonable. Um, I didn't. To be honest with you, but I appreciate. I mean, we that. do three-week-long projects that are eighty to ninety k every three weeks. Okay. Um, I so didn't know. Didn't, I don't. It didn't surprise me in that manner. Just I don't want to take that bite of the apple. Mr. Turner, I think we're going about this wrong. Um, I think what we need to do is I've been working on the internet ever since I've been here, and we've had several meetings, but it's been a couple of years. One of those meeting rooms was filled up with the ATT and the Verizon people and what have you, and they basically told us, when it's time, we'll do it. When it makes sense, we'll do it. Well, now that we have some money that we may can help them or we may can tell them, look, if you need towers to hook on to, we could take our communications towers and let you hook your equipment on our towers. That'd keep you from spending all that money. Make it more affordable. Maybe that if we're going to take some kind of a I don't know what kind of funding it would be, ARCA or future infrastructure or whatever, and put it down this path. That's fine. I think that we'd do a lot more giving it to somebody who actually has the ability to go up there and make it where you can turn the switch and turn it on than it would be for us to come up with a map of where they don't have it right now. I don't, unless they ask for that. If they ask for if we had that map, we could make this work. I'll be first on board to vote for it. But until we have that meeting, I think we could ha we could set that meeting up. Um, either you as chairman or or the, co the commission or whatever, see if we could get Verizon and AT&T and, and the players in the room to show up, the wind streams, the different ones. Have them all show up in a room said, we'd like to talk internet. Now tell us the hard, cold facts instead of what we're dreaming up at the diocese because I think they're two different worlds that we're looking at. So I think that's the next step before we spend $90,000 or any portion of that, we need to find out if that really matters or not, you know, having that map. Or would AT&T come in and say, okay, or Verizon or whoever come in and say, okay, for $90,000 and you let us use all your towers, we'll put internet in this whole area over here and turn it on wireless. We've just done something. I, I mean, other than just pay to have another study that we don't even know for sure if that's the study we need. So, Commissioner Turner, I don't disagree. I just want to say that I think you're going to find these these providers are going to try to steer it in their direction in the conversation. You got five of them in the room. Yeah, I get that, you know, but I also know that in some counties they've went down certain paths in which they'd have went down another. I'm just saying I, I think we don't we we need to know what we don't know. That's all, Mr. Adams. That yeah, I I'm kind of with Mr. Turner a bit. Um, I think you'll find that the providers kind of know the information. They do. Um, they do. Whether or not you can get them to share the information is is the problem, because um, that that is proprietary. They went through this this some sort of analysis to decide where to run the lines, and they know where they don't want to run the lines for a reason or or put up towers or or whatnot but with the incentive of, of money and then seeing competition in a room I think that I think that has benefit and maybe they don't loosen up completely and say 
hey, we're going <clears> to <throat> we're going to give you all our information, but maybe they do say, hey, we see a spot here, Windstream, out in West Putnam, and then AT&T, well, I see a spot that goes from that edge of West Putnam to Interlock, because that's where their divide is. Their divide is at Keuka Road. I mean, I, I know that. Everyone knows that. If you look at their different maps of availability, which are available online, um, and then you look at where the towers are, you know, and maybe Verizon says, well, if we put a tower between Orange Springs, and I'm just talking about Meyer because that's what I'm most familiar with, um, and then they can catch Star Lake in that. That, that, that's, that. I think there's the benefit to that, to them be aware of what each other has on a high level, and then maybe they can fill some gaps without us really doing much of anything, outside of saying that maybe we put this $90,000 towards helping them fill those gaps, to actually putting the money, the rubber where the road is, instead of doing some assessment. Because that data is had, they have it. Okay. Guarantee you. Mr. Rowell. Talk about 5G. Cause I, I I got a new phone a couple weeks ago and I got 5G. 5G. What I know about 5G is it's short range, unlike you know, uh, LT, 4G LTE. It's short range and it. I don't want to you know give a, an off the wall ratio, but there's many more towers to be able to cover an area with 5G because of the fact that it is more of a short range uh, band, uh, whereas 4G is not that way. So. 5G is becoming more and more prevalent, correct? Sure. Okay. Is there a point in time, because I, I, I was shocked when I saw 5G pop up in Putnam County. I thought we would be the last ones to see it. Um, so it, it, would that not be pertinent to the conversation? The, their, the, the assessment obviously would, you know, they would look into that type of technology as well. I mean, I'd, I'd be honest with you, I couldn't tell you what towers had it or anything like that, but it, it is a certainly a, a wireless solution that uh, would be considered in, uh, in internet for the county or broadband for the county. Because it, it, it's, it's incredibly fast, even, even when you're um, using it as, as a hotspot. Yes, sir. Uh, which I had to do down in Orlando when, because they had very slow internet. The bad thing about metropolitan areas like that is there's a lot of users. Mm -hmm. Sure. So you get slowdowns sure but um 5g was blazingly fast right compared to what they had at the resort all right well i think commissioner turner probably said it best that maybe if we can it's going to take county resources to do this mr Sugg, but um to sit down and see if the providers will come and sit in the room and have that conversation and openly have it where we can know if we can make our case to somebody that this is our non-served or underserved communities out there but um, I'm, I'm not hopeful that they'll share all that information um, I think that they're they're looking for the dollar they're looking to run fiber they've already told me we'll run fiber all day long partner with us give us 10 million dollars and we'll but we don't have 10 million dollars so that's I mean I'm just making that number up don't quote me Sarah okay so I was just but I'm just saying that's what their solution right sure. now is running fiber, which I think it's going to be, I think the solution to broadband is going to be a smorgasbord attempt yeah. for rural counties. Absolutely. And I think it's going to be fiber. I think it's going to be microwave. I think it's going to be satellite, low order and satellite. I think it's going to be 5G and LTE. I think it's going to be a sure. multitude of that. Yes, sir. But again, and, and if we wanted to be in that business or not in that business, or how do we, how do we encourage this utility? this people to do this how do we do these things right. and I think that's what we need to talk about one day so it is going to be a I mean a, it's going to be a drain on county resources right now to put that meeting together but uh, if the board allows I'll get with Mr. Sugg and we'll start working in that direction I think that's the next step okay good deal yes, sir Mr. Rawls you have the floor yeah, I asked Mr. Commander to look into the see if we if there's a possibility for us to engage in franchise agreements with these folks because that is one way we can leverage um, our ability to help the citizens and they do it in other counties so if, if there's a possibility that we that we are allowed to have franchise agreements then maybe we can bring them to the table and not have to have them tell us what they're going to do but then be able to sit down as a mutual partner with them and say what can we, what, what do you, you know we allow you to work within our county you know we have these providers come just like the the folks that say don't poop on Putnam County, um, we we allow them to work and, and sell their wares within our county. Um, surely there's got to be some way that 
we have leverage over, over what they do, how they do it, and, you know, okay. be able to move this thing along. Mr. Suggs, in the, in the meantime, though, we do have a, we have a suggest, well, the statute says a deadline date to put the local technology teams together. Maybe that would be the IT team that could work together on bringing those people in. And we can, you know, we're a very small rural area. We can sit here in five minutes and name most of them that would be in that room. So, you know, is that okay? Yes, sir. We'll look at it and, and make sure we, we abide by whatever we right. have to. Board on board? Whatever the direction we're going? Board on board, yeah. Board on board? Good deal. Sounds good. Uh, next item, Commissioner Ross, Florida State stat, Florida Statutes for Discussion on Sale of Fireworks. So um, I had a constituent that reached out to me, and he raised a question, and it was, um, why is it that he cannot get a license to operate in Putnam County to sell fireworks? And um, after talking with Chief Grimes and um, Clue Wright, uh, basically, the way our, our system is set up, if somebody comes in in January and buys a fireworks permit, and y'all can come up and correct me if I'm speaking at a turn here, but um, they tie up the county at that point. So you have a vendor from, I, I believe it's North or South Carolina that comes down here, buys the permit, and then no, even people that reside and work inside of our county at that point cannot set up mm -hmm. a fireworks stand to sell fireworks. And, uh, it just didn't seem like there was any equity yeah, there the, at all. They were having to buy that permit from the city of Palak or the, the town of Benelockin because we don't have any to give. Yeah, at, the county know, has none point. to give because we didn't have some back in 2000. Yeah, what's up with that too? Yeah. <laughs> Actually, yeah. okay. Mr. General's opinion. He gave you one. I gave you, gave you one. Thank you. <coughs> um, back in 2016, if you'll go down to the very bottom, I kind of highlighted it on mine, that last, on the first page, in the very bottom of the second to last article, it, what, it, what it reads there. Um, but there again, that was, it's five years old. Mr. Commando had some other things maybe he'd want to mention here, but. Well, um, maybe I can just give a brief overview that'll help. So in 2007, the legislature put together a task force that was gonna review the sale of fireworks on a safety basis. That task force was gonna provide a report to the legislature, which they did in 2008, recommending an overhaul. While the task force was meeting, the legislature put into place a moratorium that prohibited anyone, any local government, whether city, town, county, from allowing any new permanent fireworks sale establishment and also, if any of those you local permanent? correct, if any of those local governments had had the ability to issue permits prior to 2007 for a temporary basis, for example, if the county had issued 10 permits the year before, they could only issue 10 permits going forward. The legislature in 2008 never took action on that report, never revamped the the fireworks code as it looks in 791. And because of that, the moratorium still exists in place today. So local governments are not allowed to, one, allow any new permanent establishment, and two, um, can only allow whatever they would have permitted back before 2007. So it seems, <clears throat> I, I thought he, he said that he, there was permits issued prior to 2007 in the past. But we, yeah, <clears throat> but we don't, have, we don't have a record of any of them. So, I mean, if we don't have record, of a permit being issued, the only ones we have record of is the one in the town of Inalakan and the two that are inside the city limits of Palatka. That's the only record we have. Okay. So there, and there's, there's nothing we can do under home rule. And there's more statewide more authority in effect. Has this been looked into? Has anybody at the state level well, brought this did, up? What, what Chief Grimes gave you was uh, the request for a legal opinion in 2016. There was another one by in South Florida by Sam Gorin uh, a little bit after, I think it was 2009, all asking basically if the moratorium was still in place and the answers are yes. So yes, people have looked into it and that's the current state of the law. Hmm. All right, Mr. Rawls, anything else? I mean, I, I wonder if it wouldn't um, you know, if, if, if it was a consensus of the board, if it wouldn't do us good to write a letter to the governor's office requesting to look into this, and I mean, it in order to allow somebody to sell fireworks that can't now. Yeah. So what what's happening is is we basically just have that that one one license in Putnam County, and when this um, I think it's called Phantom Fireworks, when they come they come in and buy the license, no one else can sell in Putnam County, um, but they're an out of state vendor. And you, you got a local local guy that 
would like to do it and is being told he can't get licensed because somebody from out of state has already got everything wrapped up. And then they set their mobile firework sale places up. Mr. Adams, that? I have no problem with us putting something to the governor and saying we want to expand business opportunities, but um, it really is, at this point, it sounds like it's up to the people that want to have firework establishments throughout the state and this county to lobby the state themselves. I mean, that's, that's what they need to do. And probably what they're getting resistance from is the overall fireworks lobby yeah, they're not. is the, <laughs> owned by the bigger companies that don't want them to exist. So um, it's a kind of a catch-22, but it's up to them to take some ground roots it's action. Kind of like don't poop for Putnam has and do that at the state level because it sounds like we have no decision rights in this whatsoever outside of if we decide as a group no, we don't have to a... give our support that we think that fireworks rights should be expanded. I guess that's fireworks rights. Let's fight for fireworks rights. Um, that would be the only thing I think we could do. I don't know if that's something we'd want to do as a group, but I think I'd be willing to sign off on that it. We just move on. Yeah. All right, good. I think we've done that. Moving down to commissioner comments. Mr. Rawls, I'll start with you. Um, I think I'm good for now. Chicken? I'm good. Mr. Adams, that. Okay, Mr. Turner? I'm good. Okay, I have two things. Um, one is the Melrose community has contacted me. They're going to have a second um, Christmas parade. There's going to be a nighttime Christmas parade and then the merry time Christmas parade that's in the daytime. They want us to support a letter to DOT allowing them to use the same route and have the parade. So basically by consensus, we just need to say they're allowed to have a parade and we'll sign the letter giving them that authority. Next thing, Mr. Troxell, if you'll come up. Mr. Troxell and I and quite a few people have been working on a situation out in Mirror Lane and Manville area, close to Interlochen. And basically it's a piece of property. Well, Mr. Troxell, you probably could better explain it and I'll try to stay out of it. Okay, uh, I don't know if he's familiar with Mirror Lake Lane. Yeah. It's off of 20, you go up Northwest Street and you can take That's a left. the cemetery. The by the cemetery. Uh, there's a gentleman that bought some property there that's adjacent to the lake, but he also owns 36 feet above a 30 foot swath of land that the county owns. Uh, we determined after many, many searches that his, his, his property is split by a 30 foot easement that we own uh, right away that we own, uh, going down, allowing uh, the residents of Mirror Lake to get to their homes. Uh, we've been back and forth many times with, with, with several entities, and, and Mr. Clay Davis has been great helping us out getting the, the plat maps and everything and else. And Warren Wilhite, too, yes. For this. Uh, there's an easy solution, uh, in my mind, to, to make this to make the residents there whole so they can get to their houses without costing an absorbent amount of money on the county's side to do some other stuff. And that is to purchase that 36 feet uh, that, that the gentleman owns, uh, I don't know, it's 300 foot long or whatever, uh, so they can get to that. And it's about five grand, he's asking $5,000 to purchase that. That does several things. One is that's where the current road, dirt road back to Mirror Lake Lane is. If we were to put the road on our 30 foot that we have the easement in, it is chock full of oak trees. It would cost way more than that to clear that out and and, and build a, a road there. Is this the one that the uh, that it's the, the existing roads under the power line? Uh, they were using a prescriptive easement under there, but this. But that's part of it. But that's not. All that's you not need the, to straighten because that is a mess. All you need to straighten that mess out is five thousand dollars. I went to Vanell, met with them. Mr. Chairman, I move we move this forward for the five thousand dollars. I'll second it for conversation. Thank you. We have proper motion by Mr. Turner, proper second by Commissioner Rawls. Mr. Question. Rawls, you have the floor. Can we flip flop the property? Is we that, tried that. We, oh. we we looked at that, um, and. It, one, it just this will give us the true 66 feet of right of way in there. All we're doing is buying his 36 feet. We have 30. That will give us 66 feet. What true happens to our 30 feet? It's still ours. That is such a mess it's, out it's, there. If you can fix it for five grand, that's the best thing this county ever did. Still and ours. let me say this: we're not going to get at the corner of the fence. <coughs> I'm 
I negotiated that we have a turn. We bring that fence in and we're going to gain more land so people can bring their stuff in. Fire trucks can get in at a, they, they don't have to go up, stop, turn left. They can, so I think we, you're exactly right. Are it's, we creating a new road? Are we no, going to take we, this into we public works? The, ro the road is, is the, we're not creating a road. The road is there. Right. Uh, it's, it's Mirror Lane. But it's not ours. It's going to be ours if we buy it. Exactly. Yes. So we're, are we, we're going to bring this into the public works? It would, my, my guess is if we, if we do bring it in, it would be, it, it could still be a, a class two road. Uh, but yeah, we would, we would own that parcel of land. Uh, but there's nothing that needs to be done to it. So we're in good shape. Mr. Pickens. I think most of the questions were, were answers. I guess we're using his property. They're using his property to access it now. Correct. And the property we own where the road's supposed to be is full of trees. Yeah. Correct. That's not the only spot in Putnam <laughs> no, County that we have. This is not unique, problem. but it is a. Uh, and I just hope that. The only one I've ever heard of yeah, we could fix for five grand. Well, I <laughs> hope it doesn't rear its head again. Um, so anyway, that was my, my last question was who's maintained it. So if it goes to a two. Um, all right so we have proper motion we have proper second any further discussion all in favor signify by saying aye aye, aye. those <laughs> like sign the ayes have it julianne will get exactly. you'll get with julianne um okay good deal um and <laughs> county attorney comments Mr. Suggs comment? Nothing additional, sir. Thank public you. Public comment on miscellaneous items. Any public want to speak? Hearing none, this meeting's adjourned. Thank you.